okay, look, I'm in hiding in Garmin headquarters. I don't know if they're gonna find me, but I broke into Garmin headquarters and I was like, what gives Garmin? We in the CrossFit high intensity interval community want some of these running features for us too. What about us? And they were like, screw you CrossFit high intensity interval community people. These are running features. These are just for runners. And I was like, no way. You're gonna fix that right now. And so I did a burpee box jump over the desk and then I tried to lasso him with my jump rope and then I, I did a full thruster at chair throw at him but then he was like i'm turning on the afterburners and he just ran out of there like fast these guys are fast runners i really the running is really impressive but as they were carrying me out these big guards carrying me out there was this old janitor on the side and he took a broomstick and he did an over he did a snatch grip on it and he swung it and knocked him out and then he dragged me into this side room and he's like listen if I tell you this secret, if they catch me in here telling you this secret, I'm gonna have to run on a treadmill at a 10 mile an hour pace for two hours straight. So don't let them catch me. But get this through your head. The new stamina feature, it might not be just for runners. Cause guess what? You can use it and not run. And then he was like, boom, he did a bar muscle up over the balcony and it was gone. So I just gotta hide in here. Did I hear something? Until they, until I can find a way out, and then I gotta tell the community. Because he was like, "You gotta tell my brothers and sisters. You gotta report the good news." What is up? It's a Fit Gear Hunter. I broke out of the Garmin jail, and we're gonna talk about it today. This stamina feature, and can it be applied to CrossFit or high intensity interval community or any type of exercise platform or program that you wanna be able to complete? So, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. I just started an Instagram channel, so you can follow me there at Fit Gear Hunter, and you'll get sort of a preliminary preview of what I'm working on and what reviews are coming out and, and uh, we can get in discussions about different things. So the stamina feature is a, a new feature that came out on the Phoenix 7 and the Epix and the Tactics 7 and the Quantix 7 and also on the Garmin 400-955. And I don't know if it ported down yet or if it's going to port down to the Phoenix 6 series. Uh, I know it probably will go to the you know, 400-945 LTE and maybe it's more prevalent on watches than I realize, but what is the stamina feature and why might it be useful for CrossFit? And we're gonna break it down. So the stamina feature is basically a real-time evaluation of how much gas you have in the tank. And it's basically sort of an evaluation if you are doing high intense intervals, how long you might be able to sustain the same level of output based on how much your body is responding and reacting to the impact of that output. So it's like a visual display of how much you are depleting by the work you are putting in. It, if you're just doing like an even keel and it's all just been just for runners. So basically it's on the running and I think it's on the biking profile so that you can just see it if you are biking or if you are running. I don't know if it requires on the biking side, some sort of a, a foot pedal to check your power across time, maybe it does, but in simple terms, it's most often seen and used as a feature for running and it's on the running profile and on the running profile only. So it's this visual display. If you're just doing an even keel run where you're just sort of going out for a long sort of steady state run, then you'll just see an even keel decline of your stamina. But if you're doing high level interval work, you can see the impact of the interval and whether you're gonna be able to hit with the same intensity, but you'll also be able to see where your kind of breaking point or your failure points on your training might be. So if you're doing 400 meter you know, sprints or high intensity 400 meter uh, laps, you're gonna be able to see like if you're gonna be able to get into the next one and produce the same type of speed or the same type of output. But you think about this conceptually and why it might be beneficial for the CrossFit and high intensity interval world community. And that's why I'm drawn to looking at it more closely. You have a lot of interval type work and a lot of intensity, sort of fluctuating intensity type work when it comes to especially, you know, CrossFit. You basically often get sprint-ish work followed by a different type of work or maybe something that's got more muscle failure type to it rather than just an all-out heart burner. You know, you often will have a repeating AMRAP. So, for example, like a six minute AMRAP where you're just doing as much as you can of certain movements in that six minutes and then you get a three minute rest. And then you go back to doing six minutes at as much as you can, and then you get a three minute rest. So like rounds of that multiple times. 
And how much would it, you know, you can, you can, how obviously would it benefit us to be able to see how much juice you have left in the tank? Like how much you have left to be able to go into the second round or the third round? Obviously, and what I'm going to talk about alongside the actual stamina, and we'll see if it is going to work, but we'll show some good results initially, is you can feel whether you're going to be able to put in much more output. We'll talk about that in the summary, sort of the pros and cons of this feature. But how neat or how good would it be to be able to see like the impact of the intensity on these fluctuating rounds, the impact on your body physiologically? So let me set the stage for the testing. So let me, you know, I've been testing it over multiple workouts. So very specifically, the stamina feature is only on the run profile and you have to either use the run profile or I'll show you where it is. You can copy the run profile and then set up your display to look like whatever. But the biggest feature to be aware of is that the stamina feature works without you having to go anywhere. I oftentimes will be using a running profile and leave my watch. It is burning more battery because the GPS is on. I'll just leave it on the ground while I wear wrist wraps or hand wraps and I'm climbing up a rope like I did today. And it's, you know, it's, it's still tracking your stamina impact, which is a unique thing. So the workout I'm going to show you is primarily the workout from yesterday. And what it included, I'm gonna, we're gonna look at what it included and you know, what the impact was, but I was going into this workout on a more recovered approach. So I just wanna give you that sort of backdrop. I'm testing the training readiness on Garmin's platform and I'm comparing it to the recovery you know, score that Polar gives you every morning, the recovery score that Whoop gives, the recovery score that Athletic gives off the Apple Watch to be able to compare whether the training readiness takes multiple counts, multiple different factors and uses them more effectively to help you better be aware of your training. So you'll see how recovered I was on all these platforms going into this workout yesterday afternoon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the recovery going in, we're gonna look at the workout, we're gonna talk about what actually my goal was with the workout so you know kind of what the approach was and how I went through the workout and then we're gonna look at the results. So to get stamina, again, I'm gonna show you on the watch. We're gonna look at the watch very briefly before we go into all these other features, and then we're gonna come back together and talk about it in summary. So with that, let's dive in. All right, so here it is on the watch, or here I'm gonna show you on the watch. So normally, if you just go into the generic run profile, you're basically just gonna start looking for GPS, but you can see, oh, that's the suggestion for today. Um, you can see the distance, these are the preloaded screens and you have the stamina screen which is what is showing your depletion over time so you have your potential and you have your stamina depletion we'll see how it looks on the app in a second and you can see your pace and you can see the depletion of stamina in real time based on how you're pushing your pace and so that's where the stamina feature lives is on the running sport profile so what i did is i basically went down and this is how you might consider doing it i went down to the ad and I chose copy activity. And then when you go to choose copy activity, you can choose the running profile activity and you go through the process to copy it over much like you would do when you were building a CrossFit dedicated workout. So I wanna show you just that simple CrossFit dedicated workout. So it always gives me a running suggestion because it thinks this is a running profile because it is running profile just with a different face on it. And so what I've done is I've taken it and made it like the CrossFit um, training profile that you know is useful. So you basically have a heart rate gauge, you have a timer, you have a round counter or a lapse, number of laps you've done, your last lap time, which would show you your last time per round and your current lap time, which would also show you your current time on that current round. Plus you have a rope aerobic training effect and anaerobic training effect, which I failed to mention in the, or will fail to mention in the summary coming up. But this is another gauge that actually is somewhat of a useful tracker. You can see how much output you've put into the workout itself as an evaluation of if you've kind of emptied the tank. So there's the stamina that came automatically on it. Here's you know my specific, I, I like to have a dedicated, if I'm doing something specifically to try to keep a certain pace per round, I like to have a dedicated page where I can see you know how many rounds I've completed, the last round time, see if I'm falling off my round pace, um, just to have better awareness. So I like to make it bigger. I like to have a heart rate gauge. So these are all the basic things that you know you, you might use if you were making your own CrossFit dedicated sports profile. So now let's look at the workout. Let's talk about how I went into approaching it, and then let's look at the results in the 
All right, before we look at the results of the workout, I wanna show you how ready I was for the workout. So here is the training readiness from Garmin. When I woke up, the couple of big factors. So my sleep score was 82, that's really high for me. My recovery time is zero because I took Thursday off where I just did some mobility work. Um, really testing the GoWatt app. So recovery time was at zero because of that. And my heart rate variability status was balanced. Um, so, you know, those were factors that were big for me as far as a recovery standpoint. And I think my body battery rose to 80%. So that's really good. All these are really good numbers for me from a readiness standpoint. So if you look at other apps, when I woke up, my nightly recharge was 100% on Polar. Now that's interesting but I had good a and recharge, good sleep charge. I mean, both of those, I don't know the last time, I don't know even if ever I've hit 100% fully charged. On the Whoop platform, because I am testing all these to compare and analyze. Nope, not today. Don't wanna see that. I was at 68%. So again, I had taken Thursday off and just done mobility work. And so I woke up 68% recovered on, on Whoop's platform and then on Athletic, why it's saying 100% makes zero sense. You gotta look down at Friday. I was at 83%, so look at recovery per day because today's Saturday. So you gotta look at Friday. That's how I woke up going into this workout. So 83% on athletic, 68% uh, on whoop, 100% on polar, and then 76% on Garmin. So that was the platform, or that was the eh, base readiness to go into a hard workout so now we can test to see how stamina picked up the impact of the workout on my body all right so here's the workout as it was written so it's a 30 minute imam which means every minute on the minute you're doing something uh, for 30 minutes so 30 different one minute increments alternating movements and the movements were in five minute blocks so for every five minute block you were rotating through the same uh, series of movements, so basically six rounds of those five minute blocks totaling 30 minutes. So the five minute EMOM block was 45 seconds, just sort of a hard 45 seconds of, cal of calories counted on whether the bike erg, the assault bike, or the ski um, erg, five snatches at a heavy-ish weight, and then 45 seconds of double unders, so however many you happen to be able to get of double unders in 45 seconds, and then 12 dumbbell box step ups um, at a weight that would make that hard, and then one minute of rest. And so I shifted a little bit of my focus here for some uh, specific purposes. So don't know why there's a red line there, but how I wanted to approach it and why I changed it, I wanted to be able to earn more rest for harder work. So I wanted to define the goal for each of the movements. I wanted the snatch to be heavy enough to not be touch and go for me personally. I wanted to concentrate on building pistol strength for the dumbbell box step up. So I didn't want to just sort of fly through them. I wanted to work on strength development. So my five minute EMOM, I wanted to do 12 calories on the on the uh, assault bike or the Echo, Rogue Echo, so that I could sprint and I could get more more rest. The snatches, I wanted to pace and work on the movement pattern, so I wanted it to be heavy enough that I wouldn't do touch and go and just really focus on um, strength in the movement pattern. And the double unders, I set a certain number every time so that if I, it basically I'm trying to force myself to do more unbroken double unders because it's something that's a skill that I just, I had and then I lost because a certain rope broke. And so I wanted to be able to force more unbroken so that I could get the reward of longer rest. And the dumbbell step ups, I really wanted muscle growth, not heart rate as much because I wanted to work on pistols. So my final setup was 12 calories on the Rogue Echo bike, five snatches at 115 pounds, 30 double unders. So again, in each of those times, however fast I did it, earned me more rest and then 10 dumbbell box step ups. But I tried to have no momentum. I tried to just basically go from a dead hang, I don't know, to where you just use all single leg step up strength. Um, and then as I got through the workout, as I burned out, I would do as many reps without any kind of momentum, forward momentum, just straight step up power, and then one minute of rest. So I wanted to paint that picture before we get into looking at the results so that you kind of see how I approached it. It wasn't just a heart rate burning one. So that was not the impact of the work. All right, so here's the unfortunate part about how it turns out. So when you see this Durham County running, that is that CSFT run profile replicated, you see there's no pace, there's no total ascent because the watch was sitting on the ground. It just, it looks a little ugly because this is supposed to be a feature only for running, even though we can make use of it. Now that's the workout from today we'll look at last. So the first one we're gonna look at is from yesterday 
and the Durham County running, I went 0.37 miles, which is just not true. Um, so this is how it comes out, unfortunately, because it's it's just sort of trying to find my my GPS it just wasn't there. But when you look at it, so this is how the rounds looked. If if you looked at specifically the heart rate itself, you can see that there's you know you can see those six blocks of five minute EMOMs and the sort of continual intensity, or as my muscles broke down, my heart rate went up. Um, so when you get into the stamina feature, this is actually how it looks. And it's actually somewhat interesting because you can see the depletion. So in a full recovered day, it had me coming in at 99% stamina. And the white line is your potential, which is sort of like what you could put into the next level of work. But the real line is the declining yellow line, which is your stamina as it's burned to the ground. So each of these little humps and then declines are the intensity of the work wearing down what I had left on reserve. So when I got down to the bottom, you can see that I was right at the bottom. I was like at 11, oh, I hit 10% at the very end of the workout. And what was so interesting is that that's exactly how I felt. Um, so the 60% potential just meant that if I chilled out and recovered a little bit, I could probably go at 60% power, 60% output. You can take that to mean whatever it's worth. But it was really interesting to get to this total low. So I went from 99 on the stamina down to 10 because of the impact of the workout. And the other thing that's really neat is you can overlay the heart rate graph on top of it. So you can see that the, the mountains are you know inverse because of the impact of the hard work on my remaining stamina. So it just shows that this was an exactly perfect, to me, representation of what this value could be. Meaning I came in, recovered, and relatively on strong ground, and you know you can see the workout took me down to near zero, and that's exactly how I felt. So I thought that was really interesting to see the impact. So the other thing I was gonna show you is that this is the workout from today. It's written in a way that only those in CrossFit might know, but if you look at section B after doing some bench press, it was teams of two, three rounds for time. So that's what RFT is, and then it was, you look to the right, 22 toes to bar, so synchronized toes to bar. So that means you're not stopping. And then 22 thrusters that were synchronized, so you're not stopping. And then six RC is rope climbs. So basically you do one, your partner does one, you do one, your partner does one. So it's very little rest for a typical partner workout because you're doing all 22 toes to bar together, you're doing all 22 thrusters together, and then you're getting a break while they're doing a rope climb. So when you look at, so that's the backdrop and you know, I'm going to go fast because I don't want this to be a five hour video, but this is the work and this is how it showed up in the stamina feature today. Now we know what I did yesterday. And so, when, so just for you to know, it had me at 98% stamina. And then you can see the impact of each of the periods as the intensity went higher on the thrusters before the break on the rope climbs. You can just see the overall impact along the way but at the end of this workout it was basically saying i had 56 percent stamina left or this much sort of in the tank to go into something else now i didn't feel like that today so a it is interesting that it had me at 98 percent stamina to start the workout which after a hard day you know maybe there should it should be assumed that i'm going to be have lower reserves to go into the whole start of this workout. So that's sort of a bug that I think could be considered um, is what I'm going into. Obviously training readiness is supposed to approach that and we're gonna look at that in more detail in a full review. But this said I had basically 56% by the end of that third round, as soon as I hit the crest or the peak of the most intense part of the workout. Now I felt like I was more like at 25%. So I was coming off the workout yesterday. I felt like I was starting to hit burnout at the end of my last rope climb, like the last three rope climbs, I felt like I don't want to do this and then just sort of forced through it. So this is where it sort of didn't work as well. So let's talk about all of it in summary. So what do we see on this primary workout that I, we, we went through in more detail, as well as sort of the secondary we looked at more secondary workout we looked at in more brevity. So on one hand, it's actually pretty useful information or at least somewhat worthwhile because it tracked exactly how I felt physiologically. So what you do with that information, you know, obviously 
you know, there's, there's some self-awareness that goes into when you're nearing your end. But the fact that it was on point with that depletion, so on one hand is pretty awesome. On the other hand is that exact dilemma that you can kind of feel your failure coming. You can feel your muscle breakdown coming. You can feel when it's like, you know, a simple little movement is taking a mental concerted effort to engage in. So what is it actually really used for? Well, maybe it actually could be used for better insight if you are, you know, better awareness if you emptied the tank or not, better awareness of whether you really put out full effort in order to hit as many rounds as possible. So some form of evaluation of how much exertion you left on the box room floor. What it is not useful for is a perfect representation of that. So you saw in the workout today, it had my stamina remaining at a high, but I felt like I was really pushing it. I was really suffering through the last few, few rope climbs and the last few, few thrusters in that last segment. So it was, it was not perfect in that particular display. But what was just so interesting about why this might be useful and why I will be continuing to track it more and using this new profile that I created and seeing what value I can get out of it by seeing it on the watch mid-workout, what was used was in interesting is that I came in fully recovered or more fully recovered on uh, yesterday and I did the workout and the stamina really represented what I was feeling physiologically. So when I got through with that 30th minute or that sixth set of five, you know, five minutes, you know, I was, I, I was just like nearing my end. I was nearing the breaking point on each of the specific movements. And I was really sort of struggling through And the fact that it was just a clear representation or it was mirroring that, that I'd gotten down to the bottom of the barrel uh, physiologically meant this actually might be worthwhile. So that's why I had to make this review. I obviously wanted to make the review simply because it is viewed as a running only statistic, but it does not require any running whatsoever. You do not have to move an inch in all the workouts. The watch is sitting on the floor and the GPS is relatively worthless or is worthless when it comes to the stamina benefits you might be able to get. So with that, it's a figure hunter. Thanks so much for watching.